Pramita, ma'am, can we check the screen? Mithaman, can we start uh, after the introduction? It will be uh, correct. We can start at uh, 8 p.m. No worries. Yeah, it's okay. We can start. Dr. Lakshmi? Hmm? Hello? Yes, doctor, you Hello. can start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A very good evening to all the doctors present here. Myself, Dr. Lakshmi Swaroop. I welcome all of you for the special webinar series of Excel in association with Diksha 2021 by IHMA Piravam and IHMA Trivandrum. Today, our faculty is Dr. Meeta Nihlani. I would like to present a brief description about Dr. Meeta. The Anahada Healing Foundation is a venture of Dr. Meeta Nihlani, a classical homeopath who has been practicing homeopathy since 1991 as converted as the homeoclinic. She is a fellow of homeopathic psychiatry and counseling. She has got success in less ventured areas with homeopathy in an autoimmune cases such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis, thyroid issues, polycystic ovaries, infertility, and many psychiatric ailments like depression, bipolar dis disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders. Pediatric attensive de attention deficit problems and autism are also dealt with substantial success. Even addictive tendencies can be worked out at Anahala, uh, Anahada Healing Foundation. She has done FHPC at the Other Song Academy a Fellowship course in homeopathic psychiatry and counseling. So here I welcome Dr. Meeta Nihlani for today's session. Thank you so much. Yes, So <clears throat> we'll start and thank you for inviting me on this platform. Uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. Yes, it's visible. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, ma'am, we can make it full screen. We can see the Zoom and uh, we can see the presentation as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Ma'am, you can play the button. Yeah, the play button is enough, I think. You can start. Okay. Not able to locate it today. Can yeah. you share? No, no. Right now it's shared, ma'am. We can see the screen. Yeah. So you can right. make can you make it full screen? Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's okay. Yeah. Right. Right. One second. Go on. Right. So we start. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Deepu. We are meeting for the third time again. Right. So I'll start with my favorite quote. I transform lives through my power to surrender. This is given by my mentor, Narmada Akshat Pratap Singh. And uh, as you know that we are in a field where we always require uh, new interventions. So we need that divine intervention to help us in these difficult cases. And that is how we grow. So today's topic is psychiatric overview of pediatric cases, right? Today we are living in a world of chaos and uh, unfortunately we are seeing many pedi pediatric cases around. It may be because of the structure of the society which we are forming now, uh, because of lack of breakage of many joint family system, the cultures and the lifestyles. I think all these are attributed to many uh, psychiatric pediatric cases which are coming to us in, these, in this era. So we need many more tools to deal with these cases because it is very heartbreaking to see our little angels suffer from these diseases or these uh, issues. Right? So this is just about me as Dr. Lakshmi has said, said that I have an Anahat Healing Foundation in Raipur in Chhattisgarh. I'm practicing in Chhattisgarh. And this is my email ID for any further queries. If there are any doubts you may be encountering later. So today, uh, as uh, it was said in the introduction that I have done fellowship in homeopathic psychiatry and counseling. So that is a new addition of already what we knew in our homeopathy. We are trying to see homeopathy from very different aspects, you know, because when a patient comes to us, uh, sometimes some part of the patient's uh, personality is revealed or sometimes we see some aspects of a remedy which are lesser known. Sometimes we are able to see the full blown picture and sometimes we are not at all able, uh, we are not able to see, you know, the full blown picture or the known picture. And there, there are many unknown aspects of the remedy which are seen and which we are not able to also connect to the whole case. So this is one more perspective. It's a personal evolution method, which is now being taught by Dr. Mahesh Gandhi. And we are doing it in our Vitalia H webinars. We are a group of doctors who are working on mental health uh, based on Dr. Gandhi's teaching and we are presenting some uh, cases which we are able to solve with his teachings, right? So today I'll start with a case of autism which I was able to solve only because of this background which I would have not been able to solve uh, confidently without this understanding. So now, both of my cases, they are based on the sensation method, which is taught by Dr. Rajan Shankaran, and also some glimpses of personal evolution method by Dr. Gandhi. So we can't say that, you know, we are standing on the uh, shoulders of all our masters. Everything which, have, which we have been learning since um, college life, you know, everything contributes to our growth. So now what is sensation method? Uh, Dr. Deepu, can you remove this, uh, this off from my screen? Yeah, so sensation method is based on the premise that each individual within us, we have a specific and distinct energy that shapes us who we are at our being. We all are individuals, you know, homeopathy deals with in very individualistic traits. So our likes, our dislikes, the way we think, 
think, the way we act, the way we feel, and finally our illnesses also have that distinctive character. So this energy pattern is called as the other song. The other song defines our state of being. So whatever we do, our hobbies, our uh, likes, our dislikes, our characteristics, so everything is being shaped by this energy pattern which is within us. So this is the flavor which is given by our other song and that is why the academy by Dr. Shankaran is named as the other song academy. So now in this sense, what we believe is, you know, like we have three kingdoms, major three kingdoms based on this approach. We have remedies either from plant, animal or mineral kingdom, although we have three more kingdoms, but basically in the beginning, we talk about these three kingdoms. So based on these three kingdoms, we have different energy flavors and different behavioral patterns. So now this one more method, which is personal evolution method, this is based on the inner age. We are all stuck at one level of develop, development. Like we have many times we have seen that we have seen children who are much beyond their age. They carry the burden on their shoulders. What we see in Carson Osen is small little child who has who is bearing the brunt of the conflict of the parents or the addictions of the father. And he tries to behave, you know, a much more uh, grown up, he behaves much more, uh, much ahead of his uh, age. So that is how we see uh, remedies also in this, based on this personal evolution method. Sometimes we see an old man, but it is very childlike, like we have seen in Beraita Kab. So when we studied, when Dr. Gandhi studied many more cases, what he saw was that we all are stuck at one developmental stage. And that is the point where we have our crisis, the psychosocial crisis, and that is where our lessons lie. We are here to basically learn some lessons. This earth is a school for us, and we are here to learn certain lessons. And that is where we are stuck in our lives. Our diseases also give, want to give us those lessons. So we have a crisis, we have an inner age, we have a crisis and we have certain virtues or certain uh, lessons to be learned and integrated. So this is the basis of personal evolution method. And this is based on Eric Erickson's chart of psychosocial development. So this is nothing new, right? This is already seen. There are eight stages, which are infant, then uh, toddler, then we have three to five years preschool age, then we have school age, then we have adolescence, then we have early adult, then we have adult, and then we have old age. So on these basis, we have our own um, issues and then subsequent virtues. The only thing, one difference we have uh, in personal evolution method, we are seeing eight ages in this. We have, Dr. Gandhi has ad added one more stage to this and that is the womb stage. As we also know, like we have noble gases in our remedies. That is the stage 18 column of the periodic table, if you are well aware with periodic table. But that, that is considered as the boom stage, as the stage zero of the next column, right? So this is the way how we see things in um, personal evolution method. So now today, as we are seeing, as today my first case is based on autism, I tried after a series of um, cases, uh, I had, I don't know, uh, you know, last few years I have start, I started getting cases of autism back to back. So, I, and the way it's the autism cases were being treated or the way I was getting the results, it somehow gave me some deeper insights and also a, a way of my being that, you know, maybe I'm the chosen one and I have to do this work because the cases have responded very beautifully and in very short span of time. Normally, 
autism is something which we say is not we are not able to cure it or there are many cases which are not being able to solve but with these all integrated approaches we are able to see um, many many good results in autism and that is what i want to share with you all today so how, what is autism basically autism is basically uh, you know the the child is not able to integrate the sensory uh, things sensory issues with it there are so many senses we have five senses that is sight sound smell touch taste and balance proper and body awareness so sometimes in most of our cases we see that one of these or few many of these uh, senses are affected in autism so what i saw here was that you know the development at the level of senses is impaired that is why sometimes they react in a hypo there is a hypo reaction to senses like we have we all know about opm opm doesn't respond to pain you know there is sometimes no awareness of that pain and sometimes there is a hyper reaction there is an extravagance of that pain and fear there is a extravagant reaction to that pain uh in form of pain or fear so some of the senses there is a problem at the level of senses so most of the cases we see belong to the womb stage or are very primitive stage of development so there may be a hyper reaction or a hypo reaction so this is how this method helps us to see where the person is coming from you know from where the problem is coming from also we see sometimes that there is a over reaction hyper reaction to a stimulus uh, either the boundaries are not well developed in the primitive in the initial stages of development or there are too strong boundaries and too strong reactions and that is where we uh, this method helps us to uh, you know uh, try to map out where the patient is coming from so in some of in uh, during the course of my treatment in autism uh, there are other adjuvants during the treatment i try to help i try to ask my patients to go gluten free sugar free and dairy free till the remedy is selected and it starts working so this also gets integrated in the during the course of time and then gradually we can int start introducing these Uh, gluten sugar and dairy in their uh, diet but initially i prefer uh, my patients to abstain from this if possible whatever however possible or to the extent it is possible with the children so now this is the first case of autism so this is a child of 6 years old and he was not able to listen you know he just had this kind of energy he just he had this kind of um, expressions whenever there was a sound in the background or whenever there was some noise or whenever there was some traffic going on or whenever there were sudden noises so this is one of the most common things which comes in autism but here what we saw was our child who was 6 years old his milestones were very fast he learned everything he learned walking very fast but he was not able to communicate he was not able to talk he was very aggressive he hits people and he doesn't listen and he goes into tantrums when he is not given due attention or whenever his um, whims and fancies are not fulfilled so the this was a case which i solved like the when he entered my chamber he started kicking and throwing tantrums he just started you know kicking this this was what he did after when his um, grandmother he came with his grandmother and his uncle the mother was uh, mother uh, came uh, was there with them but she did not come inside so this was his behavior in the clinic these was his expression this is not the uh, real pick of the child but this was the expression so now what what history i got was that this uh, child is more connected with the grandmother his father was 
uh, suffering from cerebral palsy and uh, his mother was uh, illiterate uh, from south india she was somebody who did not know the language we are staying in this chatisgarh and hindi is a very spoken language here to so this lady she did not even understand hindi so she did not communicate with the world she was always inside and she did not take the child outside and the child always uh, wanted to go outside home but he was kept inside because of the mother's fear she was not able to uh, face the world she said i don't know anybody and i'm scared of going outside and she, that's why she made it a point that the child stays home and she also had this habit you know she wanted um, him to speak like other children so he wanted <clears throat> she wanted uh, his her child to speak properly to take the words but he was not able to talk and learn so that is where she used to hit him she used to hit him ki why don't you speak she she did not have that understanding that the child has some problem or even after having that understanding she was not able to uh, stop herself from hitting him and that is why the child always wanted to stay with the mother uh, grandmother so so here the child he and there was also one history of the child that he always wanted to go outside but he wanted to go to the same places he did not want to go to a new shop he did not want to go to a departmental store which he has not gone before so he insisted to go on the same places the same ice cream shop the same uh, departmental store so he always had this he threw tantrums in shops which he was not used to going so now what we see here overview of this child is here we see a child who is very scared of the mother his mother hits him a lot he feels safe with the grandmother he wants to go at the known places he throws tantrums in unknown places he screams and kicks he walks on toes he cannot listen loud voices he lands up in high grade fever frequently he cannot speak he hits everyone at school also now parents have got started receiving complaints that he is getting aggressive recently because the teacher has changed he was quite comfortable with the previous teacher but now the teacher has changed so he has got aggressive and he has started hitting the teacher and also his Uh, co students so he is very aggressive there also he kicks when triggers he throws tantrums and he rolls on the ground and also he has no eye contact which is again a symptom of autism there is no eye contact so now he as you see that autism spectrum disorder is a complex development disability typically appearing during childhood and affecting the person's ability to communicate and interact with the world so this is what we saw in the child that his ability to communicate and interact with others is affected so these are the types and all the whole spectrum there are types and these are the symptoms they do not show interest in normal things they do not look at the objects when shown they have a trouble relating to others they avoid eye contact they have trouble understanding others people feelings or talking about their own feelings there is a kind of emotional disconnect in this in these autistic people they prefer not to be held or cuddled or they might cuddle only when they want to so there is a kind of Uh, self will you know they will respond only when they want to otherwise they don't even respond to the names and that is where most of the time the parents come to know that there is some problem with the child when the child doesn't respond to their own names so sometimes they have actions which are repeated they repeat some actions uh, like recently i have a child who just sees the fan he just wants to see the rotating fan and the exhaust fans 
he the, the parents have to stop him from going near the exhaust fan he just goes there and he can watch uh, he can watch the rotating fan for you know for quite a number of time so now also there is a sensory meltdown this is the word which is used um, there are acute episodes when the when the child they, when the child is not not uh, you know not being handled they, the parents are not able to handle the ch child during these sensory meltdowns and that is where uh, we try to identify their sensory triggers they try distracting the child sometimes you know they are put that good weighted blanket on the child these are the things which normally autistic therapists they suggest the uh, parents now what is this investing a good weighted blanket again here what we see that you know most of the times i have seen in my patients of autism that they are not very grounded in their body you see that you know they are just hovering their consciousness is just hovering up and they are not grounded in their bodies that is why there is a kind of disconnect with their own bodies and their own sensations so this is also they you know there are say they have some activities they, these people they do uh, keep on doing some activities just to you know feel themselves sometimes they'll just swing they'll rotate they'll flap their hands they'll keep on touching everything they'll watch rotating objects this is what i told you recently i have a patient who just watches this um, uh, fan and the exhaust fan so now you have to understand what is this sensory overload so now on this basis this was a history which i got and there was certain observation so in most of the cases what is the tool which we uh, what is the tool for autistic children uh, for uh, giving them medicines or uh, working out autism cases in uh, autism because the the child is not able to speak so we don't have that verbal clue given by the ch child so we just see the behavioral patterns like you know what how the person how the child is behaving what is the child doing in front of you so those subtle um, expressions of the child are to be picked up and his behavior in the clinic in your chamber is one more very important tool uh, which you have to take and the second is the history from the uh, relatives and family and third which i take is which i'll tell you all in next case in this case the history uh, from the mother was very difficult you know the only thing which we got was that she was she was diabetic uh, after the pregnancy but after the delivery but not during pregnancy there was some traits but not much and the the mother was also she was uh, she was, there was a language constraint she could not speak anything other than malayalam and which obviously i couldn't understand so here the only two tools only two tools which i had was the history from the grandmother and the way he behaved in the clinic so now i'll just show you the follow up before going uh, this was the case which responded within 6 weeks and this was i think third or fourth month follow up there was 80% improvement in toe walking 50% of his fear was gone 30% concentration was improved there was repetition the repetition of words he used to repeat some common words and he did not there was no vocabulary as such one or two words he used to repeat and he did not learn new words so this was what i saw in a, in a span of 6 weeks in this child so now any clues uh anybody
Yeah, the remedies are coming up here. Right, so the remedies which have come up are Thiridion and Boron. Anyone else? Should I disclose the remedy? So it's a very, very common remedy which now we uh, give and the remedy which I gave was Chamomila. And the potency which I gave was 1M. Now, isn't it a very common remedy? We all know about this remedy, but thinking of this simple remedy in autism is something which was, you know, an eye opener for me too. And it was given, it was given on one simple keynote that he kicked. He, when he was entering my chamber, he was just kicking. And that was the rubric on which I, you know, before even he entered my clinic, I gave him Chamomila 1M, three doses, and I just told him to just take the child away so that I can talk to the grandmother. And he was like a storm in my clinic, you know, like I have uh, multiple chambers in my clinic and there are other people who are working. So he just came as a storm and there was, um, you know, like, nobody was able to work because the way he was shouting, the way he was kicking and the, the way that small little child of six years, three people, to, it took three people to take, you know, like uh, they were just holding him to stop kicking from all the four extremities and he was just going this way and so just on this basis, just before he came to my chamber, we prescribed Chamuila 1M. And by the time I took the history from the uh, grandmother. So now how do we see this case? So Chamomila uh, is, um, we, uh, we all know about the Chamomila tea. So why it is taken? Because it's a relaxant, right? So... <clears throat> some clinical trials are there that it affect, it works like benzodiazepine and these are the remedies which reduce anxiety and induce sleep Right, so this is a chamomile tea which normally we take for relaxation and what we saw in this child was such aggression and such over excitement of his state that it took three persons to calm him down. Deepu, is there any uh, way this is not moving, this light is not moving. Can you help Tipu?
right so see when i went to complete repertory they uh, what i saw was chamomile is one of the remedies which was given in autism and here my confidence grew that okay i can think this remedy for the chronic also the overall uh, this case so when the child was within 15 minutes this child was much calmer and he was able to come and sit on his grandmother's lap besides the besides me in the consultation room so it meant that he had calmed down with the remedy but i was not very sure that is this a remedy to be prescribed for the autism or it was just the acute remedy chamomile which we give for such tantrums you know the, the just the kicking behavior so now this is a chart which we have for the plant remedy here i could see that from the history i could see that there was a sensitivity towards one thing in this child and that was the injury his mother gave him he was constantly hit by the mother and the, and the mother was very uh, she was a very angry person she did not um, she was not at all pleasant to be around with the whole family so what they had done the grandmother was staying in the third floor and uh, second floor and the mother was staying in the first floor uh, they had separate uh, flats because of the mother's nature but this child always wanted to go to the dadi you know he did not know how to say dadi but da 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 he used to tell it that he wanted to go upstairs he used to show his hand so now what we see in if we come to this uh, chart we have six sub classes over here first is the magnolias the nuxwami nux moschata family and the opium family we have all these this and in the last we have solanales gentianales ignatia family and composite family in the last sub class six sub class that is what here so now as i so just by having this idea that either these people are very primitive or very uh, either they don't have any boundaries like in the beginning in the beginning it's just the energy and the vessel is to be prepared and as we go further in evolution in these six sub classes till we come to the six sub class we are so individuated the whole story of Uh, evolution is based on the individualization so initially in like an opium family there is no individuation we and uh, like in nux moschata pulsatilas the ego is not developed what we know about pulsatila is that the pulsatila person goes with the wind you know it goes whatever you say it will go it, it is very mild yielding remedy so the ego is not developed So that is what we in see in first subclass, and as we come to the last subclass, that is sixth subclass, which has uh, Belladonna, which has Hyoscyamus, which has Ignatias, Gentiums, Nuxomica. What we see is all the remedies of these subclass. They have a very strong will, a strong will, uh, and even Arnica. Arnica is a, is a person who is known for the highest ego. You know, it will not. not even show that even at extreme sickness uh, ignatia will never uh, this arnica will never show that i need you i i need you it, it will send the doctor away we know this rubric so we knowing these rubrics is one thing but when we understand these rubrics in context of this evolution and in context of the subclasses we understand our remedies better so here what we saw that the child is afraid of injury he doesn't like being hit and he is hitting back he is hitting everybody back he even hit his uh, dadi in front of me when she was trying to hold him and make him sit for uh, some more time so even he, he slapped his uh, grandmother so what is what we saw in this case was that he was sensitive to the injury he received and he uh, gave that injury back and that is what the common very common rubric of chamomile is seen that uh, kicks and you know, we have this uh, rubric 
So now if we study this remedy in this context, the six subclass here we see, uh, this is a remedy Asterins. This is a family Asterins, which is end of the, which is in the end column of six subclass means the bond borders are too strong. So the journey from no, from no ego to ego is almost over and the ego is so strong that the we are so individuated by this time that we feel the threat from outside. Every, that hypersensitivity and the struggle, everything is seen as a war. So this is what is six subclass, which is the remedy from it. It is Chamomila vulgaris, the family is compositing. So this group shows sensitivity and there is extra irritability. Everything penetrates their boundaries and they respond with aggression. That is why when the child was brought to a chamber which was unknown to him and he just started kicking at the door, at the boundaries because he has very strong boundaries he, where he can be taken and where he cannot be taken. And that is what he does in the same, uh, in the departmental stores, his ice cream store, it, it is fixed. So these people have great sensitivity to people, impressions, germs, and especially to pain. They can be survive yielding until they uh, uh, encounter resistance to their will, reacting strongly to the resistance or offense. The nervous system is very extremely, extremely sensitive and that is why we have convulsions after fever in Belladonna, in Stramonium. In Hyosemus, we see the violence because the nervous system is extremely sensitive. So Chamomila, we also give, it's a remedy for pain everywhere and in insufferable intensity. There is pain everywhere and therefore whining and restless. Immediate pains are body first reaction in spasms, in colic, in headaches or in asthma. Any pain drives them crazy. They wail and groan a lot. As a result of pain, they can be very completely self-centered. They cannot stand anything. Everything is insufferable and does not want anyone to come near them screams when getting near. So the, when you try to enter these boundaries, you know, they have very strong boundaries. The first subclass is no boundaries at all. They'll just go on sway. You come to me, I come to you, you go there and there are no boundaries. They just sway. They go with the flow. But here the boundaries are very, very strong. You cannot enter near me. You cannot come near me without my permission. So that is what is Chamomila. When we see it from the context of subclass six and lower rows. So the don't touch me attitude element of asterisks. So how we see ch a chamomila children as they like to fight and nag. They are very aggressive and their behavior is many, very mean, angry, cries, shouts, and that is their trigger, trigger to the disease. They calm down only when carried. So here we see that calm, calming. They need that calming, which the chamomile tea, the thing which we know for calming is given. So here we see the rubric. Now when we see this context of sip, subclass and composite and injury, now every rubric here makes sense. We can understand every rubric and why of everything. We see the why of all the rubrics. So mind, anger, children in stiff become when bend backward and kick when carried, throw everything off. So here we have only five remedies that is Chamomila, Sina, which is from the same uh, group, Cuprum, Creosate and Lilium Tick. Lilium Tick also belongs to almost the sixth subclass, but it's a monocot. So three remedies of this rubric are from six subclass and that is what we call as king series where the uh, ego is evolved like a king. So you can't go near a king without the bodyguards or without his formation. So that is ki that kind of power and attitude and that kind of aggression they have. So the asterisks are located at the end of ego's establishment journey defined even by the society. 
the end of column six and the table of plant as a whole represents the final stage of self definition and individuation it has a frequent feeling of losing oneself in family relationships and social relationships your relationships they are above the relationship this is a king right so king is not only for his family the king is for the world the um, consciousness or the the interaction is at a higher level so the reaction to this on one hand is fighting for one's uniqueness and against any intrusion of one's boundaries while on the other hand being noticed and craving attention so the encounter with the society threatens the ego creating a sensation of bore and feeling of being injured or hurt with increased sensitivity to pain and a tendency to injury coupled with the need to move or escape this is what i could see clearly in the child when he was coming to my chamber so here this there is a war here there, he he is so individuated the boundaries are so strong you know the king he has achieved that king uh, king kind of uh, ego and his identity is like the king he has achieved so much in the society so now he feels that i am threatened from outside because i am at a high position now i am getting those attacks from outside and that is why everything he perceives as injury and that is where he reacts and that is what is whole of composite family so there here we also have the theme of loneliness because intimate and social relations come up along with the powerful need to touch but owing to high sensitivity and awareness this touch must be very precise so in practice the touch will often result in recoiling and establishing over rigid boundaries for this reason there are physical issues of boundaries such as bacterial and parasitic infection so the pathology also what we see in chamomila or in the sixth subclass is like that the fevers the convulsions you know everything the boundaries are breached bacteria parasites autoimmune disorders so you will be able to understand the gravity of the pathology when we see the um, ego or the development so here what we see the precise touch you know he wants the touch from outside but the touch has to be precise the way he wants and see how this the precise touch is beautifully converted into our rubrics so here the touch precise touch is given by the dadi the grandmother mother here is threatening because she intrudes his borders and hits him when he can't speak so this is the rubrics which where which conform to this understanding so mind carried desires to be comfortable and cheerful in mother's lap right so this is one of the rubrics he wants that precise touch he wants to be in the mother's lap only and only she is allowed to touch him these people they also have issues with changes like we saw in our case in our child who wanted to go to the same departmental store same ice cream store and he wanted to go to the same mall and the only issue he had was going to unknown place even unknown shop the clinic was unknown for him so he was not at all comfortable coming to this clinic so they want things and then reject them as a result of extreme sensitivity they cannot tolerate changes outside themselves and that is any change outside of him is seen as an injury as a threat to his boundaries so any change is seen as a possibility for pain for an illness sometimes the parents are also hysterical about the illness of the child sometimes even if the parent has the same state they will make a huge uh, Um, miss about the child suffering and that is what will make the child again go into the shell and not bear the pain now as to they strongly react to any foreign energetic influence and stand guard at the borders but every remedy the nature of response is very unique what distinguishes asterales is the predisposition to actively and forcefully guard their boundaries by retaliating and fighting back so this is the active response of asterales 
whatever they perceive as an injury, they have to give back. And that is what we have in Charmomila, that he'll start kicking and that is what the child did in that one minute. So here, you know, without having that complete history, which I normally take in autism cases, but just this small little reaction and some little tips and bits from the grandmother, I was able to prescribe in this case. So here, the ego is very powerful. So it responds aggressively and decisively to slightest offense through erecting boundaries, blocking, spasm, resistance, allergies, assertiveness, aggression, violence, and outright cru cruelty. In nutshell, war with related themes of accidents, blows, and bleeding. Right. So here you will be able to see the pathology also behaves like as if there is a war. The high, uh, the high fevers, the inflammations, the, um, all this we see in belladonna. Right. So belladonna is a first remedy of inflammation. It means there is a war within. The signal is there. There is fever. So now we start understanding pathology also from this understanding how the border is breached. <clears throat> and we can understand that what triggered these, uh, what might have triggered these inflammation, anger. What we have seen, Belladna is a remedy for rage. And what is the rage about? <clears throat> Breaching the boundaries. <clears throat> so as the ego's development peaks, so does the oversensitivity and vulnerability to hurt and injury from the world. The response may be varying from screaming in pain to attacking the perpetrator. So they like there is an aversion to touch as it is obvious because of the strong boundaries there is an aversion to touch. They like being touched only in a specific way. Likewise, every injury to injury is liable to produce deep pain as though wronged by life itself. Right. So it is it is a feeling that they have been wronged. Don't touch me. There is a battle for distinct identity with a desire to be special and differentiated from other flowers in the meadow. They need and crave touch, but it must be precisely tailored to their specific needs and expectations. And this precise tailored touch was given only by the grandmother who could understand the child, not by the mother who was a threat to the child. So here, we now see all the rubrics of Chamomila in this context and now you will understand the why of these rubrics. Mind abusive insulting menses before. Menses also again is a injury. Mind abusive insulting children insult parents. Now you understand why. Mind anger approach of a person as as a person approaches toward them again there is a fear that they will breach the boundary and then they will give the injury. So mind anger approach of the person now we understand why Chamomila is here. Mind anger children in stiff become bend backward kick when carried throw everything off. See how everything beautifully is you know crystallized in our rubrics. Mind anger looked at when Antim Krut, Chamumila, Sina, Nakswamika, Sanikila, Silisha. So, Nakswamika is also from the same subclass, six subclass, Sina and Chamumila. So, out of six, we have three remedies which will be angry even when you look at them because just looking at them will, be give, will give them that injury. So these are the subtle points which you can see in your patients of autism or in patients who are not able to speak or in psychiatric cases when we, we don't get a full-blown picture. In most of, in other cases, what we do is, you know, we try to complete the whole picture. We know, we go in specific areas we go into the hobbies of the child, we go in the childhood, we go in the fantasies, we go in the hobbies, we go in the fears. But here we don't, in most of the psychiatric cases, we don't have those avenues, you know, our entry to the information is blocked. So here, just by knowing, you know, that look in the eyes, that, you know, anger, the flicker of anger in the eyes will give you the clue that where, from where it is coming, where this anger is coming and you can work on it. So mind anger looked at when, mind anger offended when, mind anger temper tantrums falls on floor kicking and shrieking, 
mind answer answering answer civil cannot he cannot give a civil answer because just by questioning also your breaching is a uh, boundary mind answer answering irritable surly and peevishly again we have china and uh, chamomila and nakswamika here so you can see how the six sub class is running through and through in these kind of rubrics mind answers snappishly anxiety evil from impending heart mind biting dentition aggravation now what is dentition dentition is again an injury the teeth which they come they erupt they uh, tear the gums and they come you know they erupt so this is a injury for the child and how the child is reacting by biting so now understand what is going on within that war is going on the war that my boundaries are breached and i am being injured and he kick back so biting dentition aggravation now you understand why and there is only one remedy and it's chamomila right so even by just this one single symptom you can solve the case understanding the background mind biting everything belladonna and chamomila again six sub class mind cursing swearing pains during we have nakswamika and chamomila from sixth sub class mind delusions enlarged persons are mind imaginations obstacles break to remove here every person he sees as an obstacle to his growth to his individuation mind discontent wrong everything and, and everything another does like because he wants everything his way he, he his ego is so evolved that he wants everything his way he wants precise tailored touch for himself that is why he'll never be happy with whatever other does right so discontented wrong everyone everything another not so he will be always a discontented and a capricious person there's a aversion to doctor also why because there is no precise tailored touch mind aversion to parents and father chamomila grief wounded feeling from again see we, we see this wounded feeling and only two remedies are here which is chamomila and ignatia and both belong to sub class 6 mind intolerance spoken to of being chamomila irritability sends the doctor home again we here we see arnika and chamomila both belong to six sub class and compositive family so now you understand why the doctor is sent home because the doctor will not give you that precise touch the doctor will breach your boundaries he will breach your privacy and that is why in spite of the pain you will send the doctor home why will a person who is in such a pain send a doctor home because the center doctor will examine the doctor will come into his boundaries his area and that is what he doesn't want that is why he says i am well we have a famous rubric of arnika well says he is when he is not well that that is the reason one is a full blown ego and other is the breaching of the boundaries mind naked wants to be because of the hyperesthesia of the cutaneous nerves mind shrieking screaming shouting obstinate touched aversion to being children in mind touch aversion to being pulse cannot take there this is what i told you you will come and see their pulse you will come and talk to them you will you know see the guarding of the abdomen you will give them the thermometer you will touch them so they don't want to be touched mind weeping tearful mood offense by imaginary at least even if you you know when you approach them they will feel that there is an imaginary injury and that is why there is an anger when you approach so now we have a tendency to inflammations and high fever the esterase propensity to contend with many things all at once exhaust and destabilizes the immune system the strong reaction of the organism to any perceived threat results in allergies and excess immune defense also marked by ability to produce intense inflammation and very high fever which may lead to hallucination high fever is an expression of 
high resistance. So now the pathology also behaves the same way. The immune system will also behave the same way. So here you can see how the pathology is going to the level of immune system and allergies. Because allergy is what? It's just in hypersensitivity of the reaction. So sunlight, heat, fever, congestion. Many esteril flowers, such as, a, such as sunflower, they follow the progress of the sun across the sky as they require a full sun for proper development. So <clears throat> they are an individual personality. They, you know, like they uh, need the sun. Sun is the masculine power. So man himself has a potential to turn into the source of light a sun by his own efforts. So when we start the journey from subclass one to subclass six, we start as a feminine energy, which is just wishy-washy and you know, which it is just going with the flow, the pulsatila female, the housewife, as we know, a remedy. And in the end, we have this king, we have this king series, we have Naxomikas, we have Belladonas, we have Arnikas. So here you are fully developed, the ego is full developed now, it's a king itself. So king doesn't have anybody else to take a decision from. The only uh, power which the king can get is from above. And that is the sun. It is sun means itself the source, the source of everything. So now these people are so developed that they, they themselves can serve as a sun, as a power, as a powerful source of, uh, you know, knowledge, wisdom, everything to the world and by its own efforts. And that is why symbolically we see sunflower, which is in again the calendula remedy of uh, compositive family. We see that, you know, every flower, it turns towards the sun. So how beautifully everything comes together when you understand uh, things from this context. So here the sun, a symbol of strong ego, takes its place alongside with column six themes such as symbol also of father figure and hierarchy. There is There may be amelioration from or sensitivity to sunlight and heat with a tendency to produce surplus heat as inflammation and fire and fever. So this is expression of the war in the body acute inflammations, congestion, sepsis, which will often tend to evolve very quickly. So this is how we see this case of autism with just small little bits and pieces of information. And on one keynote, we could see that this is a remedy which will take him further. So I did not change the remedy and I kept him on chamomila and then 1M was given initially and after that I have raised the potency to 10M which was given weekly. And the patient is almost 80% better. And still, you know, he could, uh, the, the child was not able to speak. He could learn, I think in 12 to 14 weeks, he completely learned whole of ABCD with A for apple, B for um, bug and, you know, Till the end, Z tuck, he was able to speak within six, uh, 10 to 12 weeks. Six weeks when there was in that first follow up was there. So he has continuously grown and he's still growing. So this was the first case. So now this is my experience of uh, homeopathic perspective in my cases of autism. I see ailment from vaccines, I see ailment from injuries, the birth injuries also. Sometimes um, in some of the cases I've seen stress in the parents during the pregnancy period, usually the marital discords, uh, the, the atmosphere at the home is very violent. There is some domestic violence going on or one of the parent is very depressed or one of the parent is very too much into his business. So the state of the parents is altered in uh, during the pregnancy and that is what sometimes I see in my cases and from there I get the history. Mother's history during pregnancy is very important. In, in the next case, you'll see how that helped me to come to the remedy. And one more thing which I see in my patients of autism is gut biome interference. So there was a case of Proteus, a case which settled much 
with proteus which is a um, uh, bubble nosod so we have to also take care of all these things while prescribing for a case of autism so should i proceed for the second case we'll take the questions at the end so the next case is a case of gluten sensitivity and dyslexia so this was a 12 years old i have written 10 this is a 12 years old girl and the way she started was that uh, i don't like when my mom hugs me she was she used to puke a lot because of that gluten sensitivity whatever she ate she puked and there was a pain in her abdomen there was a pain in her abdomen and uh, when i asked him what happens during that pain how do you react you know like what is happening in that pain she says i feel that you know mama comes and hugs me and i don't like you know when i have that pain in my tummy and mama comes and hugs me i don't like it because i feel that she is not giving me my space so i asked her ki when else you feel like this that you are not giving your space he says when the dentist comes over me and he you know comes and he works with me so this is the first experience of her pain so she says there is less space to breathe in that when mama comes and hugs me and do what you want to do so i feel as if i'm squashed as if some heavy force is coming on me and i'm squashed like the dentist coming over me so here she says i want the dentist at least half a meter away from me so now what we see here we she is talking about the space and again the boundaries right there what we saw was the boundaries were very strong and before you it came inside you just pushed them out and kicked him but here what she says i feel squashed i feel as if somebody is coming in my boundaries so i'm scared of staring and i asked her what else you are scared of she says i'm scared of staring when people just stare at me i'm scared i try to get away i want oxygen and clear oxygen that time and observation was she was constantly playing with her hands this was a case which i took um, on skype this is a case from netherlands and she was constantly playing with this hand with her hands so when i asked her about staring like you know what is your experience of staring when did somebody stare stared stare at you what was the experience then she talked about a nightmare she said that this was a nightmare which her mother told that you know it it happened a quite a couple of times she said that ugly gooey slimy pigs in her dreams the pig was great it was full of warts she woke up being scared she wanted them to go and they were threatening scary pigs this was her dream then when i asked her about what animals you like she said i love snails they are very smart little fellows she said they carry their home with them snail experiences raindrop as scary i asked her what is so smart about carrying your home she says ki uh, it's such a small animal and uh, what what if it started it starts raining when you're out and you know rain drops is pour up on you so scary i asked her like what is so scary about the rain drops she says it is such a small animal and the rain drops might be so heavy on him i asked her what will be your experience of you know like those rain drops if you were a snail she says like how we will experience cats and dogs pouring over us you know this was such a weird thing and we go when we work with sensation method we go in very weird areas and we don't understand things because they are coming from the other song the altered energy within you they are coming from the other song and we have we see that she is speaking nonsense right cats and dogs falling over you and that is how a snail feels while rain drops so this did not make any sense so you understand that this is coming from the other song 
the non-human specific part of you, right? One is a human story where she says, I don't like the dentist and mother working on me. And one is a non-human story. So this is intertwining of the other song, the sense and the nonsense. They just go intertwined and we have to see what information we are getting from here. So what we'll experience when the dog comes over you, that is heaviness. And this is, I asked, she had many um, colors besides her. Uh, and I asked her to doodle. So she just had a set of colors besides her own. I, I had not told her to keep it, you know, in the sky because I was not intending to do that. I asked her to make this doodle and this is what she made, some colors and all. And this is her room. Uh, here she is, you can see her hand. And this is her room. So this, she loves music, she loves painting. And uh, she has this soft toy uh, lying on her bed. Her room was very colorful. So it gave me a feeling that, you know, the girl being just 12 years old, this is, you know, like a, I could see like a teenage of 15 to 16 years. And it, 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 it felt that the room was of a teenager, but the child was 10 to 12 years, not more than that. So now when I ask the hobbies, what were the hobbies? Circus, acrobatics, archery, football. Although football, playing football is scary. The boys are rough. I'm scared while playing football. Somebody may just squash me, you know, like somebody may just come over me and squash me. That is what she said. I asked her, what is this squashing? She said, somebody may, you know, you know, like how stampedes happen in football uh, courts when it is, it's overcrowded. So I feel square because, because the boys are very rough. And she loves watching this master chef and all. So when I asked her, what is this hobby, you know, why you like acrobatics? He says, I like going higher and higher in those uh, pieces of fabric hanging upside, you know, how people they hang upside down and you're just playing with those fabrics and you're trying to go higher and higher. So I like that acrobatics. I just watch that. So now this was, this was the history of the child which I got. Uh, she has many friends. She used to go to school. She used to enjoy school, especially the outdoor activities. She used to draw like the coloring and, uh, one line which she said, I she said, I have many boyfriends. And then she said, I have been, I have many friends. You know, she immediately corrected her. Like, you know, I have many boyfriends, and no, they are just friends, you know, like she corrected her. So again, this gave me a clue, you know, kind of that a 10 years or 12 years girl having many boyfriends again. And that is what she corrected also. So this again gave me some clue that she is towards that adolescence phase. So mother's history. Now I took the mother's history because uh, from this case I was not, I got some clue of the remedy but still I needed somebody to back up. I needed more information for the backup. So here the mother said even she experienced vomiting during pregnancy and it was very um, you know, like that continued for quite a lot of months. And again, in that also what she felt, I felt a fog around me during that nausea period and which was relaxing and discomfortable at the same time. It stopped me from functioning. So she also experienced the same nausea which the child experienced after taking the gluten sensitivity. So because of the similarity of the complaints, I went further in mother's history. It gave me a clue that the state is coming, the things are coming from the same state. So <clears throat> here, <clears throat> this lady also, she said, she said, I like to harmonize. I like to have harmonious relationships and uh, her, uh, she was a lady. Uh, she was, when she conceived her daughter, she herself was a teenager that time. She was studying in college and she got pregnant during studies only. And she said, she said that relationship with her boyfriend was not harmonious. 
then when i asked her to explain harmonious she said like you know you should be like magnets like you know you should come together there there is a space in between but you want to stay together you do you should not repel each other but her husband and her boyfriend and her they were kind of repelling each other so there was no uh, chemistry between them so that lack of lack, lack of connection was there during her pregnancy and that is why she said i like avoiding the things she started avoiding her boyfriend she said i wanted to give myself more space and i found him to he rushed into everything like again the same gesture with her daughter told me about a dentist and a mother when uh, they wanted to hug him or when the dentist wanted to work with her even she felt that he was rushing into everything we did not harmonize we did not harmonize i liked the idea of being pregnant i wanted this child and that's why we broke up now imagine a teenager who was just 19 that time she was studying in a college she got pregnant and she wanted to continue that child with the studies and the boyfriend obviously did not want to get involved in parenting a child at this age they were not he was not ready for the child and that is why this lady got separated from the boyfriend so just imagine she was studying at the same time she was con she conceived of this child so there was bleeding in third fourth month of pregnancy i had a fear of future because there was nobody to um, you know uh, fend for me so she had these issues dreams during pregnancies mother's dreams during pregnancy means during pregnancy the mother has had these dreams she was traveling that she was she loved traveling she could see water she could see homes and relationships also she dreamt that she has forgotten her child's pram in the open and it was cold night and it could have been lethal she felt guilty as she was already dating another guy during pregnancy now see this she is 19 years old she is pregnant she had a boyfriend whom she could not continue because he was not ready to um, have this child so during pregnancy with that child she had another guy and when she was with, because of that guilt of dating that another guy during pregnancy in in her dreams she sees that she has forgotten her children's pram in the open and it was very cold night it was for, it was um, because it was very it was absolute winter and there was snow in the city this could have been lethal so this was her inner fear which was having that she might not be able to take care of the child because of her affairs with other guys so also <clears throat> this girl she suffered from weight loss like her weight was going down and this happened when her father means the first boyfriend of the mother he did not come home for christmas now this man he had his own family he used to visit his daughter he used to he never visit he visited once a year during christmas and he had skype sessions with the daughter so there was one christmas when the father finally had his own family he had settled down and he refused to come home for christmas because he had his own family and that was the point when the child started getting these nausea vomitings and her weight started going down right also one time when the father has visited the mother took a vacation the when during christmas the this old boyfriend or the father of the child he used to visit during christmas and that was the time mother used mother found time for vacation so the father used to drink a lot and to the extent that one day even he physically abused her after that child after that the child was insecure about staying with the father she broke to pieces that is what the mother said that after that she broke to pieces and after one year the father did not come and Um, that was the time when the weight of the child was reduced so now <clears throat> the mother's reaction to animals she says i am scared of spiders i love caterpillars i'm scared of lions and tigers they are too huge now this mother 
she has fascination for insects when i asked her what other animals you like she says i am a artist by profession and i love insects i love their patterns colors and minuteness and i'm intrigued by insects you know she says ki i they are so colorful all these insects that i'm intrigued and i love the green caterpillar and i asked her what is the experience of a caterpillar she said the caterpillar is very soft it is very velvety it is very tender it is very receptive it is receptive like a magnet you remember this spot magnet was used in her history and it feels very kind <clears throat> the caterpillar is very kind so this was coming from the absolute nonsense <clears throat> now the analysis of the case we needed the mother's history during pregnancy and we had to know about the mother so that we can see the bits and pieces you know homeopathy is like playing with a jigsaw puzzle we have some pieces and some pieces are missing so we need to fit those pieces from information so mother's history during pregnancy is one of the things now remedy <clears throat> what was common in both of them both were talking about space and one more thing which i saw in my analysis is both were creative both were talking about space both were restless the mother was also you know like she wanted new uh, she was bored of the same things routine things she said i can't work in a 9 to 5 job i like to be a freelancer i am an artist i don't want to be bound i just have that you know i just want to move everywhere i love traveling so what we see is she wanted that freedom also so what we see in both one you know this is the analysis this was the information which came through i did not choose this information you know whatever comes through but we need many tools that is what i tell my students that you know you can't have one tool and work with the case when you are a carpenter or when you are a surgeon you need to have uh forceps of all that you need needles of all sizes if you are a carpet you need all tools you can't make furniture with one tool you need so many tools so all these methods are just one more tool in your pocket so here i could see adolescence the child was also the girl she was also so precocious she seemed like a teenager and same was her mother she she had so many affairs in a teenage she want she got pregnant in a teenage and even after carrying that child she had one more affair and again um, she had affair and after the uh, child also when the father came to meet her she wanted to go and travel she she did not want to stay with the father although he was married again but still she could have saved stayed back for the child but she found her freedom when the father came so what we see that adolescent quality you know like as if again she is a teenager she doesn't want to grow up that is what we could see in the child one who has grown up to early to the teenage and the mother was not wanting so what we see the teenage this is coming very strongly in this so now this is air adolescence what what one does in adolescence it is just fun party time wanting to enjoy life party and festival right that is what adolescence is and it is adolescence is very creative you become very creative and that is a time when you have to think like you know what part of creative you have to choose your passion that is the adolescent thing so your kingdom what we see we can clearly see that kingdom here is animal in both the cases somebody coming over me the nightmares the pain the mother talking about the animals and you know the way uh, she says about her husband he is an animal he is a monster uh, he did this she had, he abused my daughter so you know there is a you in this whole both the cases there is a you that i'll be squashed i will be uh, there will be a stampede so the kingdom here is animal it's an invertebrate so it's a very vulnerable unprotected squashed crushed stampede what is the fate of an insect 
right? The main fear of an insect or the death of the insect is sudden, very violent, and it is just squashed. We see cockroaches also, you know, they are on the floor and we just have our feet on that. We see ants. So there is a fear of being squashed, crushed and stampedes. So now this is the chart. This is the chart of animals. We are trying, we have tried to, Dr. Gandhi has tried to make this chart based on the based on his understanding so what we see is we have insects in the infancy and childhood it is the earth element here they want to ground you know she's studying she's trying to find out things to ground herself you know we see that um, age and also what we see lepidoptera it which is adolescence and that is what we see air element here adolescence air and we see lepidoptera you know? so this is an insect when we we can see the chart we can see that both these ladies they are not wanting to take their responsibility and there is air element so they belong to that adolescence phase and the remedy and the group we are seeing is Lepidoptera. And that was the remedy which I gave her, the insect remedy. What is an insect? Insect is, you know, like the span of insect is very small, as we all know. And insect is about reproduction. There is shameless sexuality in, uh, in an insect because their lifespan is very small and they have to just multiply. Their needs are very basic and that is what we could see in that female basic instincts she was just living her basic instincts sexuality was there the journey is from earth to sky acrobatics caught up in fabrics we saw the hobby of the uh, daughter the girl acrobatics she likes to be caught up in the fabrics and her fear of being squashed and crushed below the feet so here it's an insect and what she said, ki, you're hanging with the fabrics upside down. And this is coming from the source, the butterfly, right? The insect given was butterfly. Now the remedy was Lamentis C. So now when we studied the proving, this is coming from the, first we saw the sensation method. We saw the, how the insect came. And then with the chart, we saw which exact insect, the adolescent. <clears throat> The insect, which is an adolescent, right? We could see all the themes of adolescence in these mother and daughter. This is a colorful butterfly. <clears throat> the colors, the colors were the main source of inspiration for the mother and even the child had a color box in front of her. And when we study the proving of Nancy Herrick, The story of butterfly is like a Cinderella, the fairy trail Cinderella. So what does Cinderella, the butterfly symbolizes? It symbolizes a life of free without responsibility. You could see the mother, she wanted to have the child, but she wanted that freedom also, which is the air element, which is the adolescent element. So in proving, uh, symptoms recognized from the proving of Nancy Herrick, the children feel unprotected by adults. State of unprotected adolescent. The eggs of this butterfly are laid in an open air and are not covered, so they are not protected. Now this unprotected feeling is coming from the source where the eggs are not protected. And how it translates into human this is, these people, they are stuck in a stage of adolescence, but they are not protected and they land up in teenage pregnancy. So this remedy we can use in such cases of teenage pregnancy when there is no father figure or parent figure to guide them how to control their instincts, their sexual instincts, instincts in this period. There is no guidance from the parent family. So this is what the case crystallizes now. You can see the teenage pregnancy, you can see the sexuality, you can see the adolescence, you can see the need for freedom. 
you can see just wavering and you know without responsibility so here the children are without guidance they feel anxious relationships are the focus of life relationships are good sweet and smooth deep missing of the mother who died some years ago dreams of danger dullness difficulty of thinking and comprehending aversion to mental work that is why this lady was creative she was in that air element what is air air is just flowing so how is a butterfly just flowing you know it will come it will flow it it is attracted towards only the colorful flowers so there is no responsibility just they get charmed and they just carried away by the here the flower is symbolic of the sexual attraction magnetized desire to be they are at attracted magnetized towards those flowers so there is inability to think obviously there is no care responsibility in the female there is inability to think what will happen to her child she would just wanted to have a child she just had it over sensitive picking up emotions of others now here this is the boundary issue here they don't have boundaries that is why they are scared of people coming into them so here we see it's quite different from the previous case which had very strong boundaries you know to stay away and here they are coming and these are scared you know that will be squashed so this is a difference and this is how we see the evolution obviously this is an animal this is an invertebrate which doesn't even have its own spine so without the spine anybody can enter and they feel squashed so this is lack of boundaries and that is why they are very over sensitive and picking up emotions of other this is quite opposite to the first case they are not over sensitive they are over sensitive to the injury done by here they will pick up the emotions as it is so how was the energy of the child the cheerfulness lightness feeling of you know they are just that they just want to be cheerful and they want to be light and you know going either one fool se dusre fool pe one flower to another there are only three remedies here one is limb see that is a butterfly which i gave her and one is oleum and one is petroleum so this lightness of being of a butterfly you can see the source how the source comes and crystallizes into the rubrics mind concentration difficult studying reading well because of the air element if you have a case of dyslexia if you have difficult in difficulty in concentration studying it means there is erraticness of thoughts this is the air element right so that is why this remedy helped her to you know collect her thoughts and they were not wavering just this is so this is the air element you have to remember in dyslexia in adhds you will see this air element and that is here it is adolescence reading elements from aggravation so now this is the energy if we see the rubrics of the mother these were the rubrics of the child reading elements from concentration difficult cheerfulness these three were the rubrics of the child and this is of the mother mind children desires to have beget to nurture now this lady also could have decided to abort the child as it was a teenage pregnancy but she wanted to go for the child and that is a rubric they want to beget they want to nurture they want to have children and that is limsy only three remedies are any few remedies are there and one of them is limsy here lim dreams mind dreams child unprotected by parents single remedy Lim C, mind dreams, child, children neglecting her. She has this guilt again. Same dream the mother had. Mind dreams, remorse of child of death of child due to maternal carelessness. This was the exact dream of the mother. She had that remorse because of her carelessness, which in her case was having an affair with the other uh, guy. and the child died and there was a remorse in her dreams right so this was a exact rubric of the remedy and this is what the remedy is dreams of the mother mind dreams snow strange dark cities filled with means there is snow in a strange city and that my child is out there in the pram unprotected and the child has died and she was in remorse so this is the state of the mother 
and the butterfly is a remedy which can see more colors the eyes are such so now this is the air element air is the element that is mobile eternally dynamic with no arrest it's in constant motion constant and the speed is uniquely characteristics so the, there are tactile senses are air in the mind the thoughts and their constant motion is well represented by air so the thoughts will be very constant you know they will be like air thing and that's why there will be adhd and dyslexia in air in all the cases of adhd in most of the cases you will see the, the child is not able to sit one place the thoughts are very hyperactive they are very hyperactive right so there will be many mood changes um watch out for the depletion of overaction exhaustion and they will be very in, you know these persons who have lot of air so in personal evolution method we have these six sub classes and then we have uh, vertebrates and invertebrates and further they are classified on the element they are having so we, as we all know that we are made up of panch tatvas these five tatvas are in us but the predominant uh, element or the tatva in us it it helps us to come to the remedy right so again this is what we are trying to learn and this is what actually you know some of the cases are just presenting in this case you can see free air you know that is what came up the space she is talking about space she is talking about freedom she is talking about lightness she is talking about you know that adolescent fair she is talking about creativity even creativity is air element hmm? so we are able to translate many many things or many many information which we were not able to do you know what do i do with this i could see that she is a teenager but so what how do i how does it help me in my prescription but now things have started making sense so recently um and uh, as we are talking about these elements right now yeah in my first case of autism which was around 8 to 10 years ago what i saw was the parent they gave me a follow up that you know ma'am now my child has started to put his feet on the ground now he is touching the earth pehle na what he used to do he used if his hands were stuck with the mud of the garden or something he used to just cry and he wanted himself to be cleaned immediately so the first healing was with the element of the earth you know that is what the parent told me i didn't ask her i asked her what happened of the dough uh, after the dough she said ma'am wo he has started playing with the mud he has now started going to the garden even if he is without his shoes now he is okay to put his feet down on the earth so now this what we see that there was a healing with this element of the earth and after few sick one or two months she came back for the second follow up she said now ma'am is playing with water he has started enjoying the rain and he just shows me this small droplets of water and he is so happy so 8 to 10 years ago also when i didn't know this method the patient came and told me how the healing is happening the elemental healing is happening so again when i you know just think of that case again it gave me some clues that you know that elemental healing happens in our cases too hmm? so there is a definite connection between elements and our medicines and the state of the remedies and the healing and also in cases of autism what i see that the body is not you know the soul has not come into the body they are not willing to live they are not ready to ground they are not ready to come on in this earth they are just hovering they they are not into their bodies right so when this process happened the earth he is getting healed with the earth he is getting healed with the water it means this he is now started he came into his body and the third follow up my mother told me now he is observing himself in the mirror he is observing himself in the mother and he wears his goggles and caps and he looks as at himself he looks at himself at from various aspects and he has now started enjoying his body so getting 
that soul now, which was not coming down, it has come down to the body and has started embracing this body and this is what is healing in autism. So when you have cases, you'll be able to see all these different, different aspects of the cases and you will learn so much from each case and each case, it brings so much for you to learn and you just have to be open and you have to be grateful for our pay of, for the little angels and their parents who you know teach us so much. So now butterfly in essence, it seems that the butterfly represents the state of emotional freedom and love without hindrances of responsibility and thought process. So this was in 1998, this proving was done by Nancy Herrick. And see what it is, what she has written. In essence, it seems that the butterfly represents a state of emotional freedom and love without the hindrances of responsibility and thought process. This lady, she did not have the idea of responsibility. She did not have a thought process that I'm 19 years old and I want to beget a child. How is it possible? You know, she was not grounded enough to have this and that it, that is what is butterfly. So if you have any case of teenage pregnancy which is not planned and they have continued, see now what we are doing is you know we have narrowed the whole personality, right? How the personality will be and when to give limitis. So this nowadays what we are seeing in colleges, you know, they are just living in, they don't have that responsibility and then the children and all, you know, these are the aspects of what what now we are experiencing in India, this was a lot because this case is from Netherlands. I think, it, you know, that cultural difference we are now experiencing. I think this is a time that we'll start getting these cases in India to these kind of themes. So this, this is again sensitive, highly sensitive antennae, the feeling of being small, dreamy world in the cocoon and opposite polarities, play and amusement. There are concentration problems, emotions, not the mind, inability to think, sensitive to noise, sensitive to changes in the atmosphere. So feeling unsafe is a strong theme, the eggs are not covered. And this was one more physical characteristic which a child gave me. That you know, whenever somebody comes, tries to come over her, she says, I get the sticky perspiration on my hand. I don't know why. So this also I got in the, uh, while doing the retrospective study, perspiration, clammy evening. And that is having limb seek. These are the list of butterflies. So mental symptoms are feeling of abandonment, no guidance, metamorphosis, transsexuality, Butterfly dreams. So it's a delicate and fragile and slim body. They love to dance, move restlessly, wear bright dresses, wrap arms up around their pieces while talking. So generals are better by in dry open spaces. Again, we see the need for open spaces. And desire for rich food, sweet things and wine, that is the nectar. So they desire the nectar of life, right? They are just after that pleasant sweetness of light without knowing the responsibilities. So that nectar, what is that nectar for butterfly? In, when it is translated to human life, that is just enjoyment and amusement without responsibilities. This was the follow-up. She has no yummy ache. While eating, yet allergies, she seems less stressed. The gluten anxiety is also gone. My patience with her is also increasing. And she can mumble. She has made good progress. And the punch in the gut is also gone. And this was a testimonial she gave me later when the case was over. My daughter had two sessions with Dr. Neeta Nilani as following her remedy. First two sessions were deeply transforming. Now see this word transforming in the follow-up. Hmm? Butterflies and insects, they are known for metamorphosis. So their words, that metamorphosis, that transformation is the word which came in the follow-up, right? So whatever comes in the follow-up also gives you the clue and confirms the remedy. It was deeply transforming. 
Yes, as the Rani found a remedy, magic happened immediately. Her eyes lit up and her mind and body became healthy again. Even her handwriting improved so much, no one would ever believe it is written by the same person. The remedy chosen really put my girl into her own self, her own power. I would not hesitate to recommend Dr. Nilani to anyone for kind and non-confronting therapy with possibly fantastic results. Again, this is non-confronting. You know, they don't like to be confronted. So the same words are coming in the follow-up. And this was very beautiful, the deeply transforming. There was a deep transformation. And this is what the insects look for, a deep transformation. They want to evolve. They want to come out of that ugly caterpillar phase to the full-blown butterfly. So that is a metamorphosis. So now dyslexia is a learning disorder, involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech. It is, affects the part of brain that process language, but we could see that the air element was there and that is what was corrected with the remedy. This is the caterpillar which she loved. So this girl also had one dream of, you know, having that poisonous, some, somebody gave her a poisonous food and, you know, there are many caterpillars which are poisonous. So this was again to the source. So this was all about today. So I'm done. Thank you. And if you have any queries. If there are any queries. The repertory used was a complete repertory. No, mother was not given any remedy. Uh, I just prescribed for the child. I don't know whether she took it on her own. Right, so we are also doing uh, a webinar on these elements. We have recently done a webinar at Vitalia H based on the subclasses and elements. And we'll be doing shortly, we'll be doing a second, this basics of an introduction to PEM method, the basics subclasses and elements we have done recently. So if you have any queries, I would love to answer them. Dr. Deepu. Right. Hello, Doctor. I think there is no question in that book. Okay. Thank you so much then. Thank you so much for having uh, me. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Actually, yeah. it was an excellent session. Uh, you Thank have you. explained everything very clearly, doctor. I hope this bundle of knowledge would be very helpful for our doctors to handle this pediatric psychiatric cases with much confidence. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences, your effort, your time you shared with us. Right. Okay, on behalf of IHMA Piravam and IHMA Trivandrum, we express our sincere gratitude to Dr. Uh, Mita Nihlani. And also thank you for all the participants for joining us. Yeah, and please do join our Vitalia H webinars. We are just discussing whatever small little uh, understanding we have from Dr. Gandhi. And also Dr. Gandhi is coming on our platform once a month to share his uh, knowledge. Um, yeah. okay. Hello, Priyama. Hello, Priyama. Yes, hi, uh, Deepu. How are you? Hi, Meeta. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Hi, Priya. Yeah, good, good. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Yeah. Nice to yeah, see you here. I just wanted to very quickly put a, a info, uh, you know, uh, information about the Mega Mollusk webinar that is coming up. I have shared the posters with Dr. Deepu. And this is going to be a very excellent webinar that we're doing, focusing completely on the mollusks, 
on 19 20 and 21st february it is going to be 3 hours uh, every day so you are going to get a total time of 9 hours with us uh, the pm understanding of the uh, mollusks completely dr shekhar chandrashekhar uh, rao uh, gorantla from hyderabad dr balvinder singh is going to be doing the completely the clinical part of it and uh, uh, dr chandrashekhar rao is going to be doing the first part of the mollusks and then we have dr meeta and dr mansoor and myself we are going to be taking each uh, part you know the uh, bivalve the gastropoda and the cephalopoda and on the last day we are going to have dr balvinder doing the clinical aspects of it so i have put the link there to register in fact and you can uh, contact any of us for uh, further registrations thank you ma'am Yeah. Thank you so much. Samina. Thank you so much for having yeah, yeah, this. Ma'am, Bita, ma'am, just a moment. Bita, ma'am, just a moment. Samina, do you want to talk something? I think somebody just raised the hand. I don't know. Uh, one question was: so, Which repertory did you use, ma'am? I used complete repertory. Okay, so this limpsy. Okay, fine. Is there? Yeah, it's there. All the rubrics are from that only. All the rubrics okay. are from that. Yeah. Thank you. thank you mitam yeah thank you thank you so much so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay thank you all for joining us and mitam ma'am uh, sincere gratitude to you for uh, coming again to us and priya ma'am for joining and uh, everybody those who have joined <laughs> we will see uh, we will uh, get back to you soon and uh, i requested priya ma'am to take the second part of pain remedies as well so thank you so much thank you